on the 11th of July this year, Zimbabwe was readmitted into the international football community. This came after one year and a half of a ban that the country was saving. And uh, after the readmission, there was a normalization committee that was appointed by FIFA, which is chaired by Mr. Lincoln Tassa. And we've been privileged to have him for an interview. Chairman, uh, it's now more than one month in office, and obviously a lot of people want to hear from you what has been the progress. But the very first one that has been topical around social media is the issue to do with the head coach, especially for the senior and men's national team. I don't know. Can you just give us an update on that one? Uh, good afternoon, Richard. In fact, thank you for giving us this opportunity to uh, try and connect with uh, the population on what is uh, happening. The past 30, 40 days we've been in office uh, to understand what has been happening. One has to go back to our mandate from FIFA. That mandate, the number one point is to run the affairs of ZIFA. Number two is to restructure the ZIFA organization. We have three and four, five, six mandates, but I'll just dwell on those two. When a normalization committee is uh, put in place, a lot of people in other sectors, it's referred to as the judicial management. In other words, what they are saying there is something that's not right within the organization. So before we do a lot of things, the first thing that we look at is we need to do an internal analysis as well as an external analysis. Uh, some call this root cause of the problem. And I think in the first month, we've been interacting with the secretariat interrogating it to try and see what could have uh, what could be wrong is it the qualifications is it what we don't know then after this the next phase we're going to engage with all the stakeholders we, that's the external component of the um, of the exercise from that we'll then be able to map a clear uh, a roadmap of what we want to do, how we're going to do it. From our internal analysis, we've also managed to benchmark with other neighboring associations, uh, member associations, to actually see how they are structured. Um, and we've come up with our own organization chart, which is what we're going to be working towards. Um, so, from the first 30 days, We've come up with that chart. The next thing is going to obviously be to get qualified personnel to mend those posts. How are we going to go about this? We're going to first of all look internally and then advertise for critical, you know, key jobs that need to be filled. Once we have a sound and uh, strong secretariat then becomes much much easier to fulfill the other mission of uh, you know assembling the congress okay so from the way you are speaking you are saying that uh, was obviously some time i think three weeks ago two weeks ago there was a circulation uh whereby you were speaking on the issue a late actually uh, that was conversing between uh, the normalization committee on the on the secretariat in zifa so you're saying that uh, first you're going to give an option to the internal those that are within the international st internal structures that is always the the way to go purely because we've not never worked with these people we are a new committee so i think we're going to give people that chance and uh, if they do not perform then i think we'll have to take a uh, decisive action but our aim is not to come and chase anybody away i know in a lot of normalization committees the first thing that comes is uh, the people within the Secretariat are always fearful of uh, their jobs and they will do anything to try and protect. But in this case, I think they've been misled or misguided. Basically, what we are looking at is we're looking at the skills we have internally. 
and the deployment. Are these people deployed in the right area? I'll give you an example. I understand there are people on the reception who has got a degree. <laughs> so clearly, there's something that's not uh, gelling. And those are the kind of things that we actually, when we did that internal analysis, we were looking for, to see if you have a, a round peg in a round hole or is it a round peg in a square hole, that kind of thing. Now, you did an advert for all the coaching posts around our national teams. And uh, one of the, actually, a lot of people submitted, as I read in the press. Can you give us an update now on uh, what's next now? Because obviously everyone is asking that, okay, if we are saying that we're going to play the World Cup qualifiers in November, mm -hmm. uh, we should know the coach in time so that we can do some preparation. So can you give us an update on the appointment of the new coaches, both from the senior side going to the junior side? Yes. Uh, we've had an overwhelming response, whereby I think we have well over 200 applicants, some of whom have applied for two or three posts. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine that, you know, we're having to go through data, uh, which is a big mountain here. Yeah. On top of that, we've also had a lot of pressure groups, people canvassing for their preferred candidate. Fortunately for us, we are actually putting together a committee uh, which will analyze all these, you know, a technical committee which will analyze all these qualifications and uh, people who will know the experience and the relevant experience who will help recommend the right um, candidate for us. Yeah. We're still at that stage whereby we are engaging the, um, the committee people we've selected. Uh, they will have to come in and go through the, 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 the files. Okay. So if I'm asked on the, on, the, on, the on the committee that you said that uh, you've come up with, is it a committee that is made up of uh, local people that have got technology knowledge or maybe you have uh, chose to go for international people? Okay. No, the committee is basically local people, but these people will include people who have been within the national team set up. There are people who've got their own academies. There are people who've got uh, technical... Just tell us who. Technical <laughs> no, I, I would love to tell you, but you know, part of the problem that we've seen, or that is uh, within the the arena, let's put it, yeah. is that I think there is a lot of, uh, some might call it cartels or pressure groups who have got uh, vested interests. These vested interests, I don't think are necessarily in the best interest of the country. By this I mean you have people who've got academies. Every academy owner would love that players to play at the national level. So they would also want their own coach, somebody who they can talk to, and that becomes a conduit yeah. for them to... But then what does that do? That denies the opportunity for somebody from Berengwa. Yeah, who is in a marginalized area. Yeah, and who is very talented. Yeah. So part of the structure that we want to set up, we want to be able to identify that talent from all the corners of Zimbabwe. Okay. So now, uh, when likely maybe can you promise that, okay, by this date maybe we'll have uh, our national team coaches from all age groups, maybe according to your work, work plan? <laughs> Richard, we're working towards September window. The September window is from the 4th to the 12th. Uh, and we are looking or we're in almost uh, concluding with other uh, countries so that we can get a game, at least one game within that window. If not, we we'll definitely make sure we get a game in the October window. Um, we have a game already that has been agreed with uh, Botswana for their independence, which is September 30. So the coach will be able to use some of those games to what you call it to put through his uh, put his places through. Yeah. So training and game time. In other words, you're just telling me that uh, 
by the window, the September window, we already know who the coach will be. Yeah. We will definitely. We will definitely. We want to give him the best possible time. What we will do is we will get this committee to review. We will also get our own TD uh, technical directors within FIFA yes. to assist us. You know what I mean? If it's somebody who is external or even if it's somebody who is internal, we have that uh, support that will help us to actually zero in on the right candidates. Not just one, all the candidates. Now, the other thing, I remember we met at Fufaro Stadium and uh, you just expressed a bit a worry about our, our local stadiums, saying that uh, maybe we're now afraid that we can play our first international match away from home. I don't know what is the progress so far, because I understand that National Sports Stadium is under renovation. At the same time, Fufaro is under renovation, but obviously you being one of the biggest stakeholders to use that stadium, we are always updated. Any update on, or is there hope that we will use our home grounds, the National Sports or Fufaro, for the, for the November match? That is our prayer, but uh, clearly from what we saw at Rufaro, the pitch looks the same, looks okay, but the dressing rooms are much bigger, but they are still not finished. There is still work to be done, it's work in progress. We hope they will push that one as quickly as possible. Um, the outside parking is immaculate, but inside which matters it needs to be uh, to be completed we also have uh, the national stadium from talking to our SRC they told us that they'd actually drilled four boreholes so the water situation has been uh, rectified um, and in the coming weeks I know that uh, we have people who are going to do the stadium inspection to actually see if it's uh, now suitable or it's not. Uh, we are keeping our fingers crossed that it will be. Not only that, we've also invited uh, other stadium inspectors to actually come and inspect these uh, stadiums as the NC so that we try and play at home. If not, we also try to make friends with our neighbors. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I understand. But now, there's a point that a lot of people, usually when we talk about football, we usually focus on the men's national team. We usually don't f focus on the men's side, but forgetting the women's side. I don't know, our women's side, what is the plan for them? Because uh, I remember when Solomon Dengue, when we were readmitted into the national football communi community, he mentioned that uh, there's need to professionalize our local women football. And obviously, it's the normalization committee that is one of your agendas. Uh, I don't know what is the plan or what's the progress so far. Okay. Uh, I told you about the organization chat. Within that organization chat, we're definitely going to have a women's desk at, uh, within the ZIFA uh, headquarters. Um, we're also going to have professionally, uh, professional management of that uh, whole department. As far as the tournaments are concerned, we're giving equal priority to both. It will just be a matter of budget. But we know our women are going to play in the Kosafa. You remember there was that Kosafa that we weren't allowed into, then we were later re-invited. Definitely the women are going to be uh, participating in that. Um, yeah. Then the chances of us, uh, was, because I remember Kosafa also said that as part of its efforts to readmit Zimbabwe and to welcome them back, maybe we might have a junior women tournament being played in Zimbabwe. Is it still on the cards or maybe it has been moved? We would love to host, but the reality is at the moment our secretariat is still very thin. Um, so unless we can get support from, say, Kosafa or uh, whichever. Uh, host or uh, whichever country, not country, uh, association will be wanting to stage that tournament. I think it's very difficult for us at the moment financially. There are so many things that we'll be chasing. And it's not just, say, the men's or the women's. There's also the under-17s, yeah. under-20s, all those. So I think for now, our priority is actually to get the structure in place. Okay. The, the other part, which is under ZIFA, which a lot of people tend to forget, 
is the <coughs> the, the referee site. The referee's yeah. committee also falls under CIFA. Mm -hmm. And for years, people have been saying that our referee standards have gone down. Mm -hmm. The last time that we had a referee officiating at AFCON, I think it was in 2008, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Then at World Cup level, it was only in 2002 when uh, Brighton Zamir went mm -hmm. to the Korea-Japan World Cup. Uh, also, what efforts are you putting in that uh, side also, in that committee of the referee's committee, to make sure that we improve our standards? Okay. The first thing we did when we came into office was actually to reconstruct the referees purely because there were a lot of um, unhappiness within this sphere um, whether it was sexual harassment or whatever we felt it was important to quickly nip the bud or nip the whatever, whatever they call it in the bud uh, and we put in place a new committee uh, which is headed by Mr. Matemere, yeah. Inspector Matemere, if I'm yeah. to be precise. They seem to have got off to a very good start. I, uh, I think they've had a handover, takeover. We did discuss with the previous committee, which was headed by, uh, headed by Mr. Ruzio, Ruzio but uh, we brought in a new one so that we send a clear message. It was not because of abilities or anything, but we just wanted to send a clear message that we wanted a change from, yeah, from what was happening. Um, now, with those people in place, we've also notified the technical committee, the referees are committees in, in uh, FIFA and CAF. And as I speak now, already we've got somebody who is acting as the referees manager. We're going to advertise for that post just now, uh, but in the interim, the new the guy we've put in, our FIFA forward guy, uh, Mr. Chitima, is actually in the process of arranging game uh, training for the refs. And the first uh, sessions will be in November. I think there will be three different uh, levels of training for, for our refs. Yeah. yeah. So that one is, the referees, I think, is on a good track. Yeah, it's on a good track. Okay, now obviously the last one, sorry, I'm now getting to the last one. The, the coaches side, some coaches have been crying out for coaching courses, especially CAF A. It's been, the last time we did CAF A was in 2017, yeah. of which our Premier Soccer League standards demand that uh, a coach to sit, for a coach to sit on the technical bench should have CAF A. Mm -hmm. I don't know, are you already working on efforts for us to search to now have those courses coming to Zimbabwe so that we can have our coaches also uh, benefiting for those, from those courses? Yeah, we definitely, um, this is something that is very attractive about some of these tournaments. I think the COSAFA under 20, they're trying to get us to host it. And if we do that, it comes along with some training of uh, referees, coaches, administrators. So, yeah, it's a benefit. So those are the kind of things that we're looking at. Uh, how can we quickly build up that capacity to be able to do those things within the country? Um, yeah. Okay, now, uh, Chairman, just your message to the uh, viewers that are viewing the Zimbabweans out there. What is your message to them, all the football lovers that are watching right now? To me, it's very clear. Our goal as footballers uh, or as a football association is always one, and that is to go and win the World Cup. Okay, that might be very ambitious, but the next best thing is to actually play at the World Cup. Every player that I know wants to perform at the World Cup. And I know how all these youngsters feel. That's what they want to do. So my job is very easy, is to try and create that enabling environment for every child player within the country, male and female, to be able to realize that dream. Thank you. Okay, there you head. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman, for your time. Thank you, Richard. Uh, there you had, there you had it there from the Zifa.
uh, normalization committee chairman mr lincoln Mutas, and picking for us their vision is the committee and uh, you heard him revealing to us a lot of things that are within the pipeline uh, that uh, as a nation uh, we are going to have our national team coaches uh, being unveiled to us uh, in the coming week uh, that is before the september window break because he said that he just wants to give them time uh, to make sure that he has enough preparations before the world cup qualifiers uh, kicks off that is in november not only that but also he also mentioned issues to do with the uh, referees committee that uh, uh, that is now in place and also the training courses that are coming uh, for referees that is in due time he said but maybe at the end of october or early november and also the chances of us hosting a kosafa under 20 women tournament uh, that is if we have got all the right personnel in the right place then also he unpacked to us also the issue to do with us hosting our first game at home in the World Cup qualifiers and he said that his hope and the hope of the normalization committee is for us to have that game at home but that will only be possible if our local stadiums will be approved by the uh, by the standards of, of FIFA which is hoping that it will be so because he gave us an update of the national sports stadium that they are due they are already working on the water recirculation system which was a problem before it was closed and also he said that he hopes that maybe Rufaro Stadium by then uh, will be okay and the number of issues that he highlighted uh, for NRTV. My name is Richard Zimonia.